Thanks, Dave. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Steve Richmond from Rayhell. Quick uh, corporate blur first. Rayhell, a uh, 20,000 strong company, or a German company. You might have heard the name from Underfloor Heating, from UPVC Windows. It's all about polymer manufacturing. We also do bumpers for Audi and BMW. So, a very diverse company, about 3 billion euro turnover. So in district heating, we're probably the market leader for polymer district heating pipes in the UK. I'm not going to go through all this stuff, but obviously we've got UK offices all across the country, UK production, we've got largest UK stock. Let's come on to the details. So if anyone knows um, North Wales, Blind Elf, in the middle of Snowdonia, that's where we manufacture district heating pipe. It's a natural place, I know you're all thinking. We had a launch event <laughs> with um, DEC there, I think, Peter, you came there a few years ago, do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you can imagine these are very large coils of pipe. Manufacturing in Germany, which we still do as well, it was a huge carbon just shipping coils and coils of pipe from our German factory. So we took the step in 2012 to bring the production, and we reckon it saves about 30% in the CO2. And that's mainly transport, if I'm honest, just instead of shipping all those lorries. So you've seen various pictures of dish heating pipes today. You've got steel pipes with PU foam, you've got polymer pipes with PU foam, and you've got polymer pipes with PEX foams. So that's your three options for district heating pipes. So steel, why does everyone use steel? Because you can get very large diameter sizes. You get 500 mil, 1,000 mils. You often see these on the inner city networks. They can do very high temperatures. So we talked about some 95 or 110 networks. That's when you use steels. Um, the problem with steel, you've seen all the pictures, it's a lovely straight line. You have joints every 6 to 12 metres, you need expansion loops, you have a lot of welding involved, so there's high insulation costs. So steel is great, and we work a lot with steel hybrid systems, but it has its limitations on the insulation costs. This is a, sort, um, a fact from the German Dish Heating Association. 75% of the failures in steel dish heating pipes are due to on-site welding. So the pipe's absolutely fine quality, it's all about installation on-site. So the benefit of polymer pipes, you probably guessed it by now, but they're more flexible than steel, so you get nice long coils. Other than that, it's ve very similar heat losses, it's the same type of foam, so it's all about the insulation cost is where the differences come in. And then a PEX foam is ideal for those 10 metre house connections when you've got to get very flexible pipes into the buildings. So um, Phil touched on CP1 earlier. Designing a heat network is a balancing act. You've got You've got the pipe cost, you've got the pumping cost, you've got the heat loss cost. You're trying to find that magical point in the middle where it's the perfect total cost. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer. It depends on all these different project circumstances. But we're trying to help people find that, that balancing act. So I'm going to talk about how it can affect the pipe um, cost, of, uh, cost of the pipe network with these four key areas. Quite often, someone comes to us with, I've got here 100 houses. <coughs> I think there's about 10, 15 kilowatts per house. So if you just take the old boiler, rip out an oil boiler, say that's the same heat load, they forget they put in new windows, they did new insulation. So quite often, pipes in the plant are oversized, therefore you get higher heat losses. And if you're the operator, you don't sell as much heat, so your income, I'm saying the heat is less. So it's all about doing the basics. I think Mike touched on this first. Get the building heating and cooling loads done first. <coughs> Diversity. Um, this is when everyone's not likely to use the same amount of heat at the same time, and it, this, this effect is called diversity. The more buildings you have, the bigger the effect of diversity. So if you have a diversity of 0.7, it means instead of putting a 1 megawatt plant in, you can put a 700 kilowatt plant. That's a massive difference on the cost of the plant and also the size of the pipes, which I'll show that later. So diversity is covered well in CP1, so if you haven't read the Code of Practice, really look at that. And it just basically, the more buildings you get, the more consumers, the bigger the effect. So you think this is just a magical effect I just made up. This is a German district heating network with 80 connections. The original design with no diversity was 2.5 megawatts. The consultant considered diversity, put a 0.85 di uh, factor in there. So it went down to about 2.1, 2.2 megawatts. In reality, it never reached 1.6 megawatts on the peak load. So in real terms, diversity of 0.63. So you can see how big that plant would have been oversized if we put no diversity in there, going from 2.5 to 1.6 megawatts. So it's really important to consider the diversity on the plant size and also the pipe sizes. And I'll show how that affects the capital costs. 
installing in soft dig areas where you can. We also appreciate in an inner city centre, if you're digging up London, that's not possible. But if you do have any soft dig areas, do use it because it does reduce the cost a lot. And as we all know, um, capital cost is one of the key barriers of district heating. Polymer pipes do reduce the insulation cost. Obviously, you get nice long coils, as you can see there. Um, using T secondary spines, that's basically thinking, being a bit clever, and that's what we can help with. And I'm going to show you the T's in a second, sorry. And using twin pipes rather than single pipes. So what I mean by looking at um, T's, a simple way to design a heat network, you've got one main spine on the left-hand side there. Uh, easy way to do it is go, go from like a 160 pipe to a 25 mil pipe or 32 in the house. Yes, that is absolutely fine, it would work. But there's a huge cost doing a very large pipe to a small pipe. If you just branch into smaller spines off the main spine, you get much smaller drops in size. It's actually much more cost effective to do it that way. So that something like that, something very small, can take a lot of the cost off the system just using secondary spines off the main spine. But that obviously, naturally, you just draw it like that because that's the, the simplest way to get from A to B on the pipes. It's a common misconception. Well, I still come across, and we're trying to educate people for a long time about this, but people think using single dish of heating pipes is better than twin pipes. You think, I've got more insulation around it, therefore it must be better on the heat loss as having a single pipe compared to a twin pipe. But actually, having an 80-degree pipe and a 80-degree flow, 50-degree return, you've got all that warmth from the return keeping the flow warm. So actually, this is 80-50, on a dish of heating pipe, it's 30% lower the heat losses on a twin pipe. But we get so many consultants come to us saying, I put single pipes across the whole system because they're more efficient than not. So saving on heat losses and saving on costs because the pipes are cheaper and it's a smaller trench. But that's still one of the common misconceptions we come across in the UK. So let's look how this affects. So obviously most systems, new systems are 70, 80 degrees on district heating. So if you use the 8271, which we obviously don't want, but it's 1.1 megawatt load, you'd need a 160 mil pipe. Start looking at the difference, increasing that delta T, put 20 degrees, you got to a 125 mil, 30 degrees, 110. So you can see you're already dropping the pipe size, which is reducing the capex on the system. If you push the boundaries to a 40 degree delta T, which a few people mentioned earlier, you've gone down to 90 mil. So you can see the difference that delta T has on the pipe sizing. That's not the only benefit. Let's look at the heat losses on that. So if you start off as that is your, your counterfactual 8271, <coughs> look how the heat losses start to come down as you go from 8060, 10%, 8050, 20%, 70-40. If you look at the difference between 8050 and 7040, you think I've got a 30 degree delta T, what's the difference? You saved another fair amount on the heat losses there. If you push in a boat like 6020, <coughs> um, Marcus just popped out there, but he's, he's done a few. Look at the heat loss difference from 82.71 to 60.20. 70% lower heat losses on the pipe. And you also increase the pipe lifespan, obviously. Plastic would be absolutely fine for 30 years at 80 degrees, but going down even lower, you're going to get well over 50 degrees or something. So it just helps the lifespan of the polymer pipes. <coughs> and you can see in the SIBSI guidance, we recommend um, 55 for existing buildings return and 40 for new buildings. So 70-40 with a new build would be perfect. So put it uh, visually, so most people think polymer pipes you can do maybe 500 kilowatts. In reality, you can do far more than that. So you can see how changing the flow and return, you can <coughs> go from one megawatt to four megawatt through one single pipe from changing those flow and return temperatures. That's the kind of difference you can do. Let's talk about money. So we have a network here. What is it? 75 connections. We have um, 20 kilowatts per house, about a kilometre network and a consultant who designed at 8271, with no diversity in all single pipes, because the designer thinks that's the best way forward. List price, this network would be 313,000 pounds. Let's think, actually, if I didn't look at the heat loads very carefully, it's actually 16 kilowatts, because I forgot to look at the revised heat loads. That's already dropped the pipe sizes and dropped 50,000 pounds, simply just checking the heat loads are correct for the building putting a diversity factor of 0.8, which is quite conservative, you saw from my previous numbers, that's gone down to 218,000. So there's only 100K off the original price just from applying the diversity. Look how much the pipe sizes have dropped, which really saves a huge amount of money. Going from 82.71 to 
that saved another £80,000. You can see the huge differences from tiny steps in the design, already down from 313000 to 134000 If you optimise the route, we can save another £5,000 there, so that's using the secondary spines as I talked about earlier. And changing from all single pipes to all twin pipes, that saves another £5,000 or so. So pretty much the whole scheme is twin pipes now. So let's look at that. That's a cost saving of 60% from the original poorly designed heat network just on the capital cost of the pipe. So changing, up, revising the heat loads, getting them accurate, optimising the route, changing the flow and return temperatures and using a diversity factor. So that's great. You reduce the capex. That scheme might now go ahead. Look at the heat losses. 63% reduction in heat losses now. So huge effect both on capex and opex just from simple design steps. It's there's no rocket science in there, it's just looking at, don't just do 80, 60 because it's, oh, I might do that, do 75, 50 or 70, 40. Um, Camp Holland will be used for large network. We've done many projects in Germany, which we've done huge networks. 80 kilometres of polymer pipe in this village of 11,000 residents. So that was a mix of biomass, AD, heat pumps, CHP, and every possible heat source was in that town. That's we get involved, because we're technology agnostic on the digital heating mm -hmm. pipes, we've done gas CHP, we've done biomass, we've done AD, <coughs> we did a bit of pipe work on a, a very small water source heat pumps, but I think it just shows, obviously the pipes, is, as they said, it's a distribution technology, the heat source is the key thing, let's look at low carbon sources. And I think that's it for my bang on time. <laughs> <laughs>